Hi, welcome to Orion's Flight. We're here at the Charles M. Schultz Sonoma County Airport in California, and this Tuesday, the new Microsoft Flight Simulator will be coming out. One of the airplanes that's in the flight simulator is the Diamond Aircraft Diamond Star. Now, some of you aviation enthusiasts might be interested in learning a lot of things about airplanes, and particularly the ones you'll be flying in the flight simulator, so I thought I'd take you on a virtual walk around of one of the real DA-40s. Now, this aircraft was built in 2007. It's one of the older airplanes. The one in the flight simulator is one of the slightly more modern diesel-powered ones, but the differences are somewhat minor. So we'll talk about just this airplane here. Uh, this is 556 Lima Uniform. Uh, we like to call her Lulu. And uh, we'll take you around an outside walk around as well as showing you what some of the inside systems look like. And then you'll be able to compare that with what's in the real flight simulator. My name is Hans, and I've been flying DA-40s for well over 10 years. It's my favorite airplane to fly, and I'm going to love showing you around the aircraft. So once you're at the airport, obviously the first step is to open the airplane. Now, the DA-40 has a kind of interesting design in that the front canopy lifts up. You won't see this in Microsoft Flight Simulator right away because the doors won't open, but uh, we'll demonstrate this in the real airplane. So you flip open this handle, and then you push up uh, the canopy like this. And uh, then we'll go inside. So the front part of the cockpit obviously has uh, two seats. The left seat would be for the pilot, the right seat would be for the co-pilot, or in many cases the instructor as they're teaching in the airplane. Uh, you have the throttle control right here. Uh, you have the control for the RPM for the propeller. And then you have the mixture control here on the right. Uh, fuel selector, obviously, and the trim tab. Uh, up here is the parking brake. Uh, then you have some cabin heat and for, for the, both floor and up at the top. And then the next thing you'll notice is the control stick. Uh, the Diamond Star has a stick design, so it's a little bit different from like a Cessna that would have a yoke. Uh, and then as you move the stick to the right, uh, you can see that the right aileron is coming up. Uh, pull the stick to the left, left aileron goes down. Uh, and then the opposite thing happens on, happens on the other side. Um, pulling the stick back uh, raises the elevator in the back, pushing the stick forward lowers the elevator, and uh, that's uh, kind of the control of the airplane. Uh, so it's a little bit like a fighter jet. Now you'll notice that this airplane has a glass cockpit, uh, which uh, is one of the more modern features in general aviation airplanes. Uh, you have two very large Garmin screens um, along with uh, the COM system. We'll go into that in future episodes. And then an autopilot. Uh, this particular airplane has the GFC 700 Garmin autopilot uh, with WAS, and I'll explain all those things in, in the future. Uh, there are some standby steam gauges, as we like to call them. You have an airspeed indicator, uh, an attitude indicator, and a altimeter, uh, along with a magnetic compass. Uh, these systems should hopefully be uh, not needed to be used uh, because the system itself should be fine in terms of uh, using the Garmin uh, systems for most flight operations, but these are standby instruments. Uh, you'll also notice a lot of switches. Um, down here is the master switch uh, that turns on the battery. Uh, you have the avionics switch and then a number of uh, switches for the lighting um, as well as fuel pump and pitot heat. Uh, over on the right hand side we've got the flap control. I've got that lever down right now for the pre-flight uh, and then we'll turn on the airplane in uh, just a little bit. Now every pre-flight begins by doing a walk around the airplane to make sure that all the systems are working as expected. Now for brevity's sake we're going to try to do a kind of an abbreviated walk around today. Uh, in future episodes I might go in more detail about certain specific features. But we're going to start off by checking that the canopy is in good shape, uh, that there's no scratches or any kind of uh, dents or bird debris on there in case the previous pilot had a bird strike. Um, and then we're going to begin by looking at the wing. Um, the Diamond has a very long wing. Uh, it's uh, almost 40 feet um, width of the airplane. Uh, and we start by checking here the uh, wheel fairing and uh, the strut, because the landing gear is real important. Uh, to sample, also, we want to sample the fuel. Uh, the fuel is in the wing of the airplane. And so we have a little fuel sampler cup um, that allows us to pull some 
fuel out of the uh, wing. And we will do this on both sides of the airplane. But for now, we take a look that the fuel is blue. Uh, this is an indication that it's what's called 100 low lead fuel. And uh, this um, needs to be clear. There needs to be no water in it. Uh, and it needs to be free of debris. Um, then as we come along the rest of the wing, you saw, notice this little hole right here. Uh, that is called the stall warning horn. And uh, it blares at you if there's something uh, wrong. As we go along here, uh, we'll notice there's a fuel cap right here. Uh, this diamond uh, uses uh, 100 low lead fuel, uh, which is gonna be a little different from the aircraft that you're gonna see in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which uses diesel. Um, but then we have a little strainer here, and then we'll pour this fuel back in. Um, but we can see inside that uh, there's plenty of fuel in the airplane, so if we had wanted to go take it flying today, uh, that would perfectly be okay. Now next come the taxi and landing lights. Uh, we'll check those during the next part of the pre-flight. And then underneath them is, uh, still covered up, is our pitot tube. Uh, this is the instrument that helps us understand the airspeed of the airplane. Uh, there's three little holes, uh, one at the front, uh, one at the bottom, and a very tiny one in the back that's difficult to see. And that helps us understand what our airspeed is in the air. So if this is still covered on, then we wouldn't see any airspeed, and then it would be difficult for us to know how fast we're going. Coming around here to the wingtip, these are some very nice LED lights uh, that we'll check uh, later. Uh, and then we come around the back of the wing. We have these little static wicks. Um, this is an instrument rated airplane, so we can take this into the clouds if we want to and if we're rated for it. Um, and this helps discharge the static, static electricity. And then we come to the aileron. Now the aileron works in such a way that it actually changes the shape of the wing by going up. Uh, when the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down, and consequently, if the left aileron goes down, the right aileron comes up. So what we're testing during pre-flight that this has smooth motion, and then we're also looking inside of the cockpit to see that the stick moves in the correct direction uh, when we're either pushing down or pulling up. Next, we're testing for the flaps. Uh, this is used for both takeoff and landing. Um, there's three settings, up, takeoff, and landing settings. Um, and then we're checking the general condition of the wing as well. Uh, the Diamond has a back part, so it's a four-seater aircraft. Uh, has a separate door for the backseat passengers. And this is where you can also see your fire extinguisher. Uh, and then on the left-hand side behind the pilot seat is the what's called the Pilot Operating Handbook. And on the right-hand side, there is a book that it describes the functioning of the G1000. And the aviation regulations stipulate that you have to have that in your aircraft. Uh, finally, we're looking at what's called the empennage of the airplane. Uh, you'll see antennas down in both the bottom and at the top, and uh, we'll go into those functions as well. Uh, the tail of the airplane uh, has the horizontal stabilizer. Um, now that keeps the airplane from flying straight and true, and attached to the back of that is the rudder. Now we end up checking the function of the rudder as well. Uh, so pulling that left and right, just being very gentle with that. Um, we're taking a closer look at some of the parts, but I'll uh, skip that for day. And at the top, because of the T-tail design of the diamond, uh, you have the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, coming around the back, um, the part that uh, moves up and down like this is called the elevator. Um, that changes the pitch of the airplane up and down. And then at the very back of the elevator, you have a thing called the trim tab. Um, this trim tab device helps make it a little bit easier to fly and uh, keep level, and the autopilot uses that as well. Uh, coming around and around here to the other side of the airplane, we're kind of looking for the same things, just checking the general condition of the airplane is okay, uh, checking out that the uh, antennas are still there, and then just like you did on the left wing, uh, we're going to go look to check the, the flaps, um, that they're nice and tight. Um, coming around that the ailerons are moving nicely and you're not hearing any kind of weird uh, uh, sounds from moving them. Same thing, lights over here coming around and if we were flying would be untying the airplane from the ground, um, but we're going to keep that. Um, coming around here on the right hand wing, uh, we're going to check the wheels here, the left wheel, I guess this is the right wheel and the right strut. After we've checked the landing gear, uh, we're going to check over here. Uh, this here is the temperature probe, uh, as well as the step that helps you get inside the airplane. In the front part of the airplane, uh, you have your Lycoming engine. Uh, in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, that will be a diesel-powered airplane. 
uh, engine. Um, this one here is uh, Lycoming. Um, over here, we uh, obviously the engine is wrapped in a big cowling, and so it's hard to see all the parts uh, like this, but you can at least check the oil. And so we twist the little oil thing, just like you know you might in an automobile. Uh, you pull that out, and you check that there is a sufficient oil quantity in there. This one has a little bit over six quarts of oil. Um, minimum is four quarts, but usually you're running it somewhere around seven, particularly for instrument flight, and you want it between six and eight. Uh, coming around here the front, uh, you check the nose landing gear, um, and then you pay special attention to your propellers. Uh, in this particular model of diamond, uh, these are actually wooden propellers um, that are wrapped in carbon fiber and painted. Um, and then uh, you have three of them. Uh, you have a constant speed propeller, and you're just checking the general condition of the propeller blades, uh, making sure that there's nothing unusual here. Uh, and then you're popping around here, uh, checking you know the conditions of the screws and things like that. And fortunately, we don't have to do that in the simulator on every flight. Um, other little things here is there's air intakes uh, that provide air for the pilots, uh, and um, you'll see one of those also underneath the wing here, um, and that provides air for the passengers. Now, aviation headsets, the ones we use in the cockpit, are pretty similar to what uh, gamer headsets are like. Um, you've got uh, effectively noise cancellation in some of the more advanced models, and you've got a little mic. Um, that's a pretty high sophisticated technology, which is why it costs a fair bit of money. Uh, you then have a control uh, piece here that lets you adjust the volume. Uh, some of these units have Bluetooth, uh, you can adjust that Bluetooth volume up and down and obviously the on and off switch. Now the way you end up uh, hooking these things up in the Diamond Star uh, is you come around here to the little area here behind the pilot seat. Uh, you see there is eight little holes here. Um, the top row is, here we go, the top row is for the pilot, the second row is for the co-pilot. Um, and it's important to get those right because the, uh, the mic button, the push to talk button on the yoke is going to be important for, uh, you know, which one you click. So when you're plugging this in for on the pilot side, um, you go ahead and stick uh, the audio in here and the mic over on this side. They're slightly different sizes, which is why they won't fit into each other's ports. Uh, and then once you've got that set up, uh, you can turn on your headset and then uh, the push to talk button on the diamond control stick is down here um, at the bottom. Uh, it's kind of like where the trigger might be on a uh, fighter jet. So we've now hopped in the DA-40 and uh, you'll notice that now we have to close the canopy. So I'm going to grab up here on the handle and uh, bring the canopy down and then uh, lock it into place. Um, one of the real unique things about the DA-40, now if you're inside it, and something that will make it really enjoyable for VFR flying in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is you really have a phenomenal 180 or more degree view of everything without any obstructions. So you can just kind of see, well obviously not in the air here, but you can see how you can turn your head to the left and see your wing. Uh, you can turn your head to the right and see your right wing. And um, you know, really great, fantastic, unparalleled visibility for an airplane. Uh, and that's one of the things that makes this airplane so nice to fly uh, VFR. And I think people will enjoy that in the uh, flight simulator as well. Now, uh, now that we've done the pre-flight, I'm going to try to raise my flaps again. Uh, first thing I'm going to do here when I start up uh, the aircraft, after checking that all of the circuit breakers are in and that everything else is off, I'm going to click the little master switch right here. Um, this is going to spin up a lot of the electronics in the airplane. There's effectively a bunch of computer equipment in the back of the airplane is up here in the front and they talk to each other and so obviously the Garmin G1000 will boot up here. Uh, this one will look a little bit different from what you see in Flight Simulator. Um, I've seen some of the previews and uh, uh, definitely looks a little bit different. Um, after you start up uh, you can acknowledge that all your databases are updated and this particular one I still have to update it for my next flight. And I always like going to the engine page before I start the engine. Uh, now that we've got the airplane up, on the left-hand side you see the primary flight display booting up. On the right-hand side you have what's called the multi-function display. I'm going to raise the flaps right here. Uh, so this one goes, takes us to uh, takeoff flaps. 
and then one more up takes us to the landing flaps. And as the computer is booting up, uh, you tend to get a bunch of different bells and whistles. Uh, you have various systems that are starting to spin up. Um, and now that you see that the horizontal um, attitude indicator uh, is, has come up as well. Um, you'll learn a lot of this as you're flying. Many of you already know how to fly these glass cockpits. Uh, for those of you who don't, um, the attitude indicator is built in with the sky being blue and the ground being brown. Uh, you have your airspeed indicator on the left hand side, you have your altimeter on the right hand side, uh, vertical speed indications right over here, and the heading indication down over here. Um, much of that is backed up obviously by the standby instruments over here, uh, so your attitude indicator, your airspeed indicator, your altimeter, and your uh, magnetic compass. Uh, if you're ever in the air and for some reason this display and this computer break, uh, you can press the display backup button and what happens then is all of your primary flight information is moved over onto the right hand screen assuming the right one has a problem uh, but in either case the instrumentation for the engines the most important thing is brought up over here and uh, with that um, I'm going to go press this button and switch that back to its normal setting uh, and then we're going to shut down the aircraft because we're not taking it flying today but we will in the future Tors on an system episode. System test. Okay. Uh, and uh, that is the uh, traffic awareness system. Uh, we'll discuss that as well in the future. So we got Lulu nicely tucked away, got its cowl plugs on, shut the canopy and uh, put on the gust lock. Uh, so she's safe uh, for being parked here for a while. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little walk around. In the future, we'll take her flying. Uh, but uh, come this Tuesday, we're going to go take the Microsoft Flight Simulator DA40 up for a spin uh, and see um, if it's anything like the real thing. Have a good one. Tuesday, a lot of us will be downloading the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. One of the aircraft that's uh, this morning, I'm going to take us through a walk around of the DA-40. Now this aircraft is a little bit older than the aircraft that 